Hello, my name is Tony, and today we're going to look at another horrible case with you. In November 2006, just a few days after Thanksgiving, a young mother-to-be named Avis Banks was found brutally murdered in the garage of her home in Ridgeland, Mississippi. This shocking event left the community in shock and the authorities scrambling to find answers. As news of Avis Banks' tragic murder spread throughout the tight-knit community, friends and neighbors were left in disbelief. Avis was known for her infectious smile and kind-hearted nature, always willing to lend a helping hand to those in need. Her untimely death sent shockwaves through the town, leaving everyone questioning how such a senseless act could occur in their peaceful neighborhood. The local authorities, determined to bring justice to Avis and her unborn child, immediately launched a thorough investigation, leaving no stone unturned in their pursuit of answers. Avis Banks was the middle child of Fred and Deborah Banks, growing up in a loving family with her two sisters. Even from a young age, Avis had a passion for reading and learning. She worked hard and became the first person in her family to graduate from college in 2001. Avis studied child development and had big dreams of opening a daycare center for underprivileged children. Avis's dedication to her studies paid off when she graduated with honors and received numerous accolades for her academic achievements. Her passion for child development only grew stronger as she gained hands-on experience through internships and volunteer work. Avis's dream of opening a daycare center for underprivileged children became more than just a goal, it became her life's mission. She knew that she had the knowledge, skills, and determination to make a positive impact on the lives of these children and their families. Described as smart and beautiful, Avis was a remarkable person. She loved working with kids and was thrilled to land a job at a daycare center in Ridgeland, Mississippi. Everything seemed to be falling into place for Avis as she was engaged to a man named Keon Pittman, who was not only a teacher at Chastain Middle School but also a basketball coach. They were expecting their first child together and had plans to get married in February of the following year. Avis's days at the daycare center were filled with joy and laughter as she nurtured and cared for the children. She couldn't wait to share her love for kids with her own little one on the way. Avis and Keon had spent countless hours discussing their dreams for their growing family, and the thought of their upcoming wedding filled her with excitement. She envisioned a beautiful ceremony surrounded by loved ones, marking the beginning of their journey as husband and wife. Little did she know, however, that her world was about to be shattered by a gruesome crime. Little did Avis know, Keon had a secret. He had been seeing another woman behind her back. Avis was completely unaware of Keon's infidelity, and this secret would eventually lead to a tragic turn of events. Carla Hughes met Keon Pittman while teaching language arts at Chastain Middle School. They began a sexual relationship despite the fact that she allegedly knew he was engaged to Avis. She also claimed to have been aware of Avis's pregnancy. Carla and Keon would meet at Carla's house for hookups, and Carla would occasionally come to Keon's when Avis was not present. She would also pass notes to Keon at school, referring to him as her future husband. Keon, on the other hand, basically stated that it was just sex and that he had no future plans with her. Keon claimed that after he and Carla ended their relationship, she began stalking him and threatened to tell Avis about their affair. Avis was killed four days after the alleged incident. Avis came home from work on November 29, 2006. It was reported that she usually returned home between 3.30 and 4 p.m. Her routine was to get the mail and then enter the house through the garage. Keon Pittman returned home, and despite the fact that he didn't normally enter the garage to get inside, he opened the garage door and discovered Avis on the floor. She'd been shot and stabbed, but she still held the mail and her car keys. Her throat had been slashed and she had multiple gunshot wounds. Her pants were also slightly pulled down, but the police ruled out sexual assault. The door had been kicked in, and it appeared that the killer had attempted to make the house appear ransacked. The drawers in the master bedroom were all open. The house appeared to have been ransacked, 
but the police believed the scene had been staged. A shoe print discovered on a glass door in the house was recovered for further investigation. Avis was ambushed in the garage shortly after returning from her daycare center job, according to police. When the authorities inquired about Keon's whereabouts, he stated that he was at basketball practice at the school where he was both a teacher and a basketball coach. Keon Pittman was immediately brought in and appeared to be wailing and making guttural noises but not crying or showing any emotion. He was also on the phone with someone, addressing them as babe. I don't like this at all. These motherfuckers think I have something to do with this shit, I believe. When I came home, I, I knew something was up. Carla Hughes, Keon's girlfriend, was also brought in for questioning. Carla initially denied her relationship with Keon, but later admitted that they did have a sexual relationship, but that was all. Carla was also asked if she owned a gun, which she denied. He's not a boyfriend, he's his friend. Nothing sexual with him. Oh, nothing. Okay, so no, understand. no, nothing. That changed when Carla's cousin, Patrick Nash, revealed some shocking information. Patrick Nash came forward a few days later and said Carla had borrowed a .38 caliber five-shot revolver from him. He claimed that when she borrowed it, it contained five bullets, but when she returned it, it was empty. He also claimed she borrowed a knife and never returned it. Keon testified that his relationship with Carla was not serious, and also said that there was no long term. It was sexual, caught up in the moment, I was speaking of myself. Carla never had a long-term strategy. Carla, according to Keon, introduced him to her friends as her future husband and had previously stalked him and Avis. Furthermore, the shoes found at Carla's house matched the shoe print found at the murder scene. According to the show, they also had blood spatter on them that matched Avis's blood. Detective Dillard was the one who discovered the shoes that perfectly matched the footprints at the crime scene. It all went down when he and the other officers were looking through Carla's closet. Let me tell you, there were shoes galore in there. But one pair caught Detective Dillard's eye. They were black tread safe shoes, size 10, made for women. But that's not all. The cops also discovered a handwritten poem addressed to Carla, signed with the initials KP. Those initials belonged to Keon Pittman, no doubt about it. Carla was initially charged as an accessory to murder, but on December 8, 2006, she was charged with two counts of capital murder in connection with the deaths of Avis and her unborn child. The trial started in October 2009. Prosecutors believe the murder was committed so Carla could finally be with Keon. During the trial, there was a lot of evidence presented that pointed towards Carla being the murderer. First, the gun she had borrowed was confirmed to be the murder weapon. Additionally, her shoes matched the ones that left a mark on the door that had been kicked in. Furthermore, phone records showed that Carla had made calls in the vicinity of the murder scene at specific times. Despite the mounting evidence against Carla, her defense team presented a compelling argument. They argued that the gun being confirmed as the murder weapon did not necessarily prove Carla's guilt, as it could have been planted to frame her. Furthermore, they questioned the reliability of the shoe evidence, suggesting that it could have been a mere coincidence that Carla's shoes matched the mark on the door. Additionally, Carla's attorneys pointed out that phone records alone did not establish her presence at the murder scene, as anyone could have used her phone. They claimed Keon was a womanizer who didn't want to be tied down by a wife and a child. But Keon testified that Carla became a stalker after they ended their sexual relationship, and that Avis was murdered while he was at basketball practice. Finally, Carla was found guilty of two counts of capital murder by an eight-hour jury on October 13, 2009. After they said Carla was guilty, they had to decide what her punishment should be. During this part, her father addressed the jury. He really hoped they wouldn't give her the worst punishment, which is called the death penalty. He said, please, please don't take my daughter's life away. She's always been nice to a lot of people. She's a good person. I just don't get it. 
I just don't understand any of this. This isn't like her. After thinking about everything, the jury decided that Carla should spend the rest of her life in prison. They gave her two life sentences without the chance of ever getting out. That means she will be in prison forever. According to prison records, she is still being held at the Central Mississippi Correctional Facility for Women in Pearl, Rankin County. Keon Pittman married someone else in 2008, and it appears that they sent Carla a copy of his marriage certificate while she was in jail in order to get her to turn on him. Carla Hughes maintains her innocence and believes she was framed. Her request for a new trial was turned down. I believe Carla killed Avis, but I still believe Keon was involved. He didn't seem to care about Avis or the fact that she and his unborn child were killed. He allegedly cared about Avis and Carla at one point, but he showed no emotion about what happened. Carla and Keon, in my opinion, plan it together, or Keon said something about wanting to be with Carla or not wanting to be a father, and Carla killed for him. There's simply too much evidence for me to believe Carla is innocent, but not enough for them to arrest Keon. I'm hoping that if Keon was really involved, some evidence will come to light or Carla will say something about it. I believe Avis received justice, but her family believes Keon was also involved. This did not have to happen, and Avis had no idea who she was going to marry or what would happen to her. I would greatly appreciate your thoughts on this case. Do you think the punishment given to Carla was fair and appropriate? Or do you believe a harsher penalty should have been given instead? I would appreciate it if you could share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Tony was with you, and thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click the bell to stay up to date on the biggest stories from around the world. I'll see you soon. Take care.